Hey, kia ora mai tātou whānau. Uh, welcome back to Kaitaki Manakai Backyard Gardens. This is Lewa here. Hey, um, we're on the moon phase fiddle. And pretty much what that tells us is that um, the moon is dark. In other words, it's, it's not in the sky. And that's because the sun is directly behind it. Um, so the sun and the moon are setting at the same or in that same kind of kind of location unlike um, Rako Nui where the sun full light is shining upon it so um, in regards to uh, Mara Mahi um, what I'm doing is I'm not planting I'm just doing some husbandry around my garden and I'm starting up my next lot of Mara um, using a Waipurako process, a composting process, as I did with this mother back here this time last year. Um, so you will recall if you look back on our journey, um, this was virgin soil this time last year and I put down um, a composting system uh, with a tarp over the top and I rotated it every second or third day keeping it moist. Uh, we have grown out of here uh, cabbages, broccoli, our main crops have been um, potatoes and kumara, which I've just harvested. And I'll just show you what I've done over there uh, in preparation for our mahi today. So our main task for today is I'm just going to show you around uh, starting up a composting system um, so that in three to four months time, you might actually be able to plant in that space, which I'll show you soon. Um, and I'll just have a quick quick check around, around that. All right, click the like button. Um, if, if you hit the like button, it the, the system, this Google system, sends out invites for people to watch this to 10 other people. If you share the, 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 the video, it goes out to hundreds of people. So just to recap for those who haven't um, seen us before, we have a backyard garden. We started off here two years ago, three years ago with just the backyard, uh, back, back of the shed. This was actually a rubbish tip. Um, all the people that were staying here just threw all their everything in there and so we had to re um, clean it out uh, reintroduce good stuff to the soil and so that's been producing and I've got vegetables growing in there at the moment uh, last year we planted out this I'm turning this into a chicken coop um, but here's some of my nitrogen that I'm going to be using for my compost pile which I'll show you soon um, I have to chop it down break it up and I'll be using that so that's the nitrogen part but um, just uh, span around and then the rest of our, our mother is we had some youth here last year helped us dig this with a uh, broad fork um, and that is a no-till um, uh, example of, of growing vegetables and I'm just slowly building up the health of the soil in there um, and I've just planted out some uh, brassicas in between the two silver beets um, that were in there um, but yeah this is my little backyard garden Coming up to the mara that we did earlier, um, uh, well, this was the one that I had the tarp down this time last year. So autumn last year, 2023, uh, we started, this was a virgin bed, there was nothing in here. Um, and eventually the main crops that came out of this was our potatoes, which we've got stored, and kumara, which I've got drying over there. Um, and now I've planted in some more vegetables which are cauliflower and cabbage and underneath these wood here I've got I've sown direct sown uh, carrots I've got two rows of, of carrots um, in this mara. Um, underneath here which I think are coming through I've done this season's garlic so I've grown I've planted out uh, three rows of garlic in here and I did have garlic last year at the back there, but I think it was too shaded. There wasn't enough wind to go through, so we had a bit of rust on the garlic. So I'm just trying out the space to see what it looks like. Um, and you can see I've got other, other vegetables around the place. Uh, we don't really eat kale too much. Uh, it's not very popular up here. Um, so yeah. Yeah, all right. Anyway, that's what, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, so this this mother here, uh, as I've already been talking about, um, Coming to the end of a harvest, um, the health of the soil is important for a successful garden. 
And so when it came to planting in new crops of things, or new vegetables, or new seeds, um, I try to put um, things that have high modi, or high energy, or high life in it back into the soil at the same time. So before I planted my cabbages, carrots, and cauliflower here, um, after I harvested, I dug it through with my fork, and we, other videos you'll see that this is actually really beautiful, beautiful soil compared to what it was um, this time last year. Um, put some compost in, put some blood and, uh, your blood and bone in, put some um, sheep pellets down, uh, and I also grabbed out of my Pamu Nuke, my worm farm. Uh, the centre part there, I dug out um, uh, my worm castings and I added, I added that into the soil too, particularly around where I planted the, the vegetables. So the, the intent being is as we introduce new hua or new fruit or new kākongo, uh, we want to uh, replace the, the, the energy and the source of the food into the soil so that we have healthy organisms, we have healthy worms, and we have healthy fungi uh, working into the ecology of, of the soil. This little gap here, um, I'm going to be working on a tāpapa. A tāpapa is a Māori process for growing kumara tupu, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm going to be getting some rocks and just building it up a bit and allowing the rocks to heat up the, the, the omi omi, the whenua that's sitting in there that I'm planting in kumara. So I'll be, ta I'll be taking one of the uh, kumara that I've grown already, um, so some of those will be eating and others will be um, source materials for our next crop that's coming up. Um, so I'm just collecting all these rocks. Um, so if I feel these rocks here, these are actually, they're warm, so they've got heat in it. So one way to start thinking about growing uh, your kumara tupu, your kumara shoots, um, is setting up a tāpapa because uh, you want to kind of you want to plant your kumara. Um, it depends on when you want to harvest it and store it and all that type of stuff. But normally the latest is it's Labor Weekend in October, so you start thinking about growing your tāpapa uh, resource um, August September, a bit earlier than that, but around that, that period of time. But because it's winter normally, the, the rocks will heat up the soil and it just gives it a bit of a boost. Um, so I'm just taking an old customary practice and just going to create a nice little little bed in here and I might have three, three kumara. But yeah, that's what we're doing. That's not our main task today, so what we're going to be doing today is coming over to our um, composting space. As you can see here, um, my backyard, I'm slowly converting it into, into a space of kai. Um, I have to prune back my, pr uh, my lemon tree back a little bit, um, but I'm actually going to use the space here. Uh, I'm going to have a lawnmower uh, depth on either side from the concrete in. Um, and we actually, when we go to church, we've got a pathway that we walk on. So I'm going to keep that pathway along here, spare two, so that we actually have Access. So it's going to be uh, roughly in that little gap in there, which will possibly for next year might be my beans and things like that. But, um, so we're going to turn this space into a garden like we did over there. Okay. Now, um, how I'm using this, I'm drawing on a couple of examples and resources for as an example for us today so I've done this before and you can see other videos how I've done it um, so the main influence around how I've seen this work is a guy called uh, Jeff Lawton um, and he's pretty much the guru around permaculture out of Australia um, and he's got an example of a 10-day composting system using a cover which I've got my tarp over here um, but the way I did it, my addition to that is I, um, uh, as an example for that mara over there, that side, I wanted to plant potatoes at the end of August, 
So pretty much from May through to August, I, I just extended out the principles that Jeff Lawton talks about in regards to growing um, the, the um, Waipudaka, uh, the composting situation here. So I'm doing two things. I'm converting a green space into a mudder and I'm utilising um, the composting method for that to happen. Because when it comes to planting in it, I'm actually just going to filter out the compost that we create and then add that into the soil that we're creating here. I'll possibly broad fork it when it comes to the time, but you'll see in by the way by August this will be all dark and brown, everything will be dyed off, and I'll have this lump of compost in here. Uh, the other resources that we're using here is um, from uh, Te Waka Kaiora, uh, which is a indigenous program here in New Zealand that looks at um, organic growing from a Māori perspective, applying indigenous kaupapa. So you'll see photos um, of the resources that you need to do a composting, um, whether it's a composting bin or a composting bays, uh, the principles are the same. Um, so too with my worm farm that I got over, over that side there, um, the principles of layering, the principles of adding in uh, nitrogen, carbon, uh, water are exactly the same. Um, and so I'm just applying it to, to the space here. Copy. Um, so yeah, there's um, so there's the photos that I've, I've sourced those from the, the Wakai order. That just gives you an idea of a list um, of items that you might need for each area and the purposes of why we're doing what we're doing. So they're they're added along, but I'll, I'll refer to those where they've, they've come from as we go through. So the resource I'm doing is a space, and I'm wanting wanting to use this space here because as you can see, the sun uh, comes in. Um, it used to be a garden historically, um, as you can see. There's a bit of a bit of a flat bit, but there with mounds, the right where this yellow part here, there used to be a mudder in there. I'm just going to extend it out a little bit, um, and I'm thinking I might have um, beans or something like that growing in that space to give us a bit of shelter because it gets quite quite hot. Um, and I'll keep a walkway here because we tend to walk through that way. But um, so I'm going to I'm going to utilise here. Um, I've mowed it down, and the thing that you need for composting is two resources: carbon, uh, which is your brown stuff, and nitrogen, which is your green material. And so, brown stuff as an example, I've got wood chips here from the local um, Te Pukinga. Uh, my son's doing a, a carpentry course, and they just wanted to get rid of their grass clip, um, their wood chips, they, there's no, they haven't been treated, there's no um, oils or anything like that, that you might get from a chainsaw for example, so that's one example is um, a clip chip, wood chips, uh, which you'll see me put down soon, uh, cardboard is another one, um, which you'll see it a lot of, because effectively this is just trees, and we're just returning it back, back to the to the fenua, so cardboard, um, wood chips, which are these things over here, um, so that's your carbon, it's all your brown stuff, um, and my greens, which is lawn clippings, I've done it, I've actually, as I was putting my um, wall cl clippings in here, I was also adding some of the wood chips that I've got on the other side, so, but that's my, that's my nitrogen, and also, um, as I've already mentioned at the start of this, video. I've got a pile of weeds that I've taken off already from around the mudder um, where they actually, those are the kumara shoots, so I'll chop those up. Um, you would have seen me fill this up uh, after I took out the worm castings for planting over there. I've, um, yeah, so that resource there will go into my compost pile that, that you'll see. And then the last thing is water that we're putting on. Uh, water and then right on top will be my tarp. Um, now, some ask questions around, can you put meat um, or animals inside your compost pile? 
Now, I was responding to a conversation yesterday around this, and I said it actually depends. Um, it depends on the size of your compost. Um, I do not recommend in the compost for my worm farm putting meat in there um, because you've got, a, you've got a different process going on in that. You're wanting the worms, which they're about at that part to the top, to do their thing. Um, and it's too easy to attract mouse, mice or rodents um, in that process. It's not to say the same can't happen for here, but the way I'm going to be laying it will show that there's a, um, and it's going to be covered, the smell of the meat will be hidden. Um, and so if you're following uh, Jeff Lawton, for example, he puts a roadkill or a chicken right in the center um, of the compost pile. And it's kind of like a, a dynamite to the whole breaking down process of the, um, the, the composting process. Um, it gets a bit of a boost to that. Um, so yeah, it depends on what you're doing and the size of it. Um, but it has to be in the middle of anything else around it, so it hides the smell. Otherwise, you're going to get rodents and animals trying to get it. Um, I, I'm not putting meat in this situation, but what I am doing is I've got someone else who's given me in those bags over there um, sheep poo uh, from her farm. Um, so I'll just be I'll be adding that into into the mix idea being is you're actually wanting the, the, the pile to get into a, um, a certain temperature level uh, that encourages the breakdown and the fungi and the, um, the microorganisms to start eating and breaking these again. So what I'll do is I'll just get onto it and um, yeah work away and um tend to be transitioning from season to season and so you're, you're harvesting your winter supply and then converting the foliage that's part of that uh, into compost and so uh, you're seeing around the place I have piles of rubbish um, all ready for composting and so um, I've laid out my carbon at the base. The cardboard is representing roughly this, the, the kind of footprint that I'm going to have as my, as my mother um, in, in summertime coming up. And so I've got an edge where I can mow around, I've got a bit of a walkway I can get past. And then I'm just building up my pile that I'm wanting to compost that eventually will break down and will become the compost for this particular mother. I'll also be putting in other compost from other silk sources. But in there, so I've got my carbon, which is the brown, uh, nitrogen, which is the green, um, and you would have seen the sheep pellets that I put in there, put that right in the center, um, and then watered it, because you want to keep it moist. You don't want it, um, you want the, 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 the organisms and the fungi and the microorganisms active, uh, rather than uh, being too dry. Um, if it's too dry, add more green. Um, if it's smelly, add more brown. Pretty much the principle. Uh, and water it. Uh, normally, yeah, what I had done or had learned from um, Jeff Lawton is rotating it every second or third day for every day um, just to keep the cycle going. In other words, you're putting the external, the outside materials into the centre. And if need be, you'd add in the meat or uh, poop or things like that. Um, you could put lime in there as well if you wanted to. But as um, I'm, I'm utilising the resources that we've already got from the garden, and most of my nitrogen uh, has come from, from the lime here. Uh, you'll see the photos that I add into this uh, throughout the, um, the series of the proportions and the types of things that you can put into your mother. Uh, but this is just a, a, a 
example here. Um, I'm, I'm chopping up my crimper shoots uh, or the, the, uh, the foliage of it. It just breaks down a bit easier, uh, and particularly when it comes to the, 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 the tuning it around, uh, you don't have any loose strings. Yeah, kia ora whanau. welcome back. Well, you would have seen what's going on with my building up my compost pile um, through this uh, series, this video. Um, it's just scalable from here, either down or up. The principle is the same. Um, so whether I've got my worm farm or just a pile in the back of uh, green waste and brown waste and so forth, your compost pile you're needing both carbon and nitrogen remembering your carbon is your brown stuff like it's cardboard wood chips uh, sawdust um, dried out grass and your nitrogen is your green, your green waste um, you could put also your vegetable waste in there if you did um, I, I didn't because I normally put it into my room farm um, the thing that I did also, just um, just a bit of a backdrop, is because I utilised some material out of my worm farm, the worm castings for this mother over here, um, the sequence of replenishing uh, the soil and then restocking my um, pamu moke, um, was first before I had done this. So this is really the last step in my system of my butter um, when I'm utilising particularly my, um, my my worm farm. So I want to replenish that and so if I look a quick, I'll just to show you the book in here. Um, I topped it up um, the other day with all that the pile that was over here. Sorry for moving the camera, but don't have it. so we stop that. But, um, it's looking a little bit dry, so I'm actually going to put some more green stuff in there and a bit of a watering. Um, so I'm wanting to keep this going and feeding that, and so that's where my vegetables, uh, my food waste from out of the kitchen tends to go in there. My other composting pile is in the back over here. And this is just a wild one, meaning that I don't really put any intentionality into it other than just putting stuff in there as, as a, like this is my reserve waste space. Um, every now and then I'll turn it over. But it's not a, it's not a real active thing, but it's there and, and it's working. And a lot of the stuff that comes out of this garden here goes over, over to the whereas my other mother um, that I have on the side tends to feed my worm farm and as I've harvested through the materials here I've chucked it and chuck it into the compost pile that I'm doing. Um, I could put in the wood chips but I'm not going to. I'm actually using the wood chips around the garden as you can see over on the new one over here and on this bed here. I'm just using it as edging and to suppress the weeds. I'm not putting it into uh, where the vegetables are per se. Because um, the carbon can also draw out any nitrogen that's in the soil as part of the breakdown process. Um, so I'm not wanting to interfere too much. It's really just there to, to help me suppress the weeds a bit. And then by the time we come to plant, potatoes uh, in August that'll be really all broken down and ready to mulch and so I'm continually putting stuff back into the soil 
as you can see around here. And I built it up. You'll see the edges building it up. Uh, and it's the same with this one down here. Just replenishing, putting things back into this wall. So getting back to what we're doing here is I'm creating a bed where I've, I've kept my walkway over here. There's a bit of a walkway over there. I'm going to have a bed here um, next summer. And this will be the materials that I'll it'll break, it'll slowly break down. And if it's breaking down quicker, I'll just add more materials in. Um, Margaret tops off some sheet manure, so that's helpful. It's like a boost. Uh, makes all the microorganisms that are inside there are now inside this. Um, and they go active. They're like a booster. It's like a big protein shake boost to that. And then as I, what I'm going to be doing now is putting the tarp over the top. And so that keeps it all warm. Um, the sun will heat it up and so that just adds more um, activity to it. And periodically I'll, I'll water it. Hey, um, send us a comment if you've got ideas or things you want to put in there um, in regards to composting. Um, if you know of Kupu Māori or Etahi Oma Kōro, Kapu Tamai, Kupu Hau, Kupu Marama, Te Pān Te Mahi Te Maranei, Me Ki Te Mahi O Te Waipu Rākau, Kōro Mai, Tuki Tui Mai. Yeah, love to hear from everyone if you've got comments, uh, if you've got ideas, if you saw something that you felt was new or as we were going around. Yeah, just um, just leave a comment, really appreciate that. It's always good to be encouraged and get some insights and learn from the wider whanau in regards to marakai and gardening and self-sufficiency and growing our own food. Alright then, hey thanks whanau, uh, thanks for watching, really really appreciate it. Um, I'll do a quick summary at the end once I put the tarp on and see how it's all laid up and um, yeah, secured. All right. Awesome. Hey, hey, welcome back. There we go. That's it. There's my, the Takahu example of making a compost. Um, I've actually done two tasks because I'm thinking about next season. Um, I want a garden bed here and so um, I'm, I'm preparing the ground as, at the same, same time because with my carbon or my cardboard, <laughs> pardon me, don't put down, that'll eventually break down, it'll kill the weeds that are underneath it. Um, and as the compost that I put in there, both the carbon and the nitrogen, um, the, the booster in regards to the sheep poo uh, will break down and you'll, you'll come with this beautiful brown composty stuff that I'll filter and use next, next season. But it still gives me enough space where I can walk and make a trail here. We can walk along here. Um, I do like walking around and feeling the grass. Um, but that's our, yeah, that's us. That's, that's our, um, that's our um, compost pile um, for us in, the, uh, in, our, in our backyard. Um, Utilising the materials that have come from the garden already and the resources that we've got around us. The tarp is just like a, a cocoon. Um, eventually that'll warm up and as it heats up, it'll get to a temperature. And if there's anything in there that like seeds that we don't really want to have, it'll kill it um, the heat. Um, and in the meantime, the organisms, the microorganisms, the fungi, and the worms that are in the poop will start breaking that down. So if you want to do this at home, um, in your own space, it's just a scalable process. So whether you're utilising a compost bin like that, or a worm farm, or the one that I showed you around in the back of the house, or something like this, it's all scalable. Um, you just got to uh, make sure that you have the proportions right. And if you're not sure and it goes, goes, goes all funky on you, like for example, if it's starting to smell, uh, put the carbon in. Uh, if it's looking dry, put nitrogen And all that is, is if it's dry, uh, you're putting in your green stuff because it's got moisture inside it, you can also water it. 
um, if it's smelling, um, then it means it's, the, the, it's too moist and it gets too funky. So then you know, just put more carbon, which, is, which can be more chips, which is my pile that, I, that I've got over there just to add it and do that to it. And I've got another bag of wood chips in there so I can do that uh, as, I, as I go along. But um, I'll have a look at this probably every couple of days uh, just to see how it's going. Um, yeah, alright. Thanks for watching, eh? As I said, click the like button, click the share button. And if you've got any comments, uh, please share them. Yeah, happy gardening, Farno. Um, happy soil, happy plants. Healthy soil, healthy plants. And if you have healthy plants, Bye. 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 Bye.